Hello and welcome to Thought for November the 9th. Our readings are Ezra chapter 3 and 4, Hosea chapter 6, and Acts chapter 23 and 24. And our thought is, be it known. People promise to say the truth, the whole truth and nothing but the truth, in a court of law. The fullness of that wording is interesting as it tries to counter the common human tendency to bend the truth. This is done sometimes to the extent that it really becomes an outright lie. It has been said that half-truths are more dangerous than lies. When a human being declares to another, be it known to you, certain facts, it is always as they want to see the facts. We have examples of this in both our Old and New Testament readings today. In Ezra, we are reading of the struggles of the first contingency of Jews who returned from captivity to Jerusalem with the purpose of rebuilding the temple. Nebuchadnezzar, in destroying it, was so thorough that even the foundations were wrecked. The non-Jews, who were transported to the area from Assyria, as we read in Ezra 4 verse 20, take offence when the Jews decline their offer of involvement in the work. The result is they try to stop the work. When a new king comes on the Persian throne, they write a letter to him saying, Be it known to the king that the Jews are rebuilding that rebellious and wicked city. If this city is rebuilt and the walls finished, they will not pay tribute, custom or toil, and the royal revenue will be impaired. Verses 12 and 13. This was, of course, a total distortion of the facts. Really, a lie. It is astonishing how often money is made an issue. It was an important factor in human decision-making then and now. Now, in the New Testament, we read that after Paul's arrest by the Romans in a riot that the Jews provoked, they allege before the Roman governor that Paul is one who stirs up riots among all the Jews throughout the world. He even tried to profane the temple, but we seized him. Acts 24 verses 5 and 6. Testimonies as to the true cause of a situation are so often distorted through prejudice. Paul, of course, refuted these claims in verses 12 and 13, and he says, I always take pains to have a clear conscience toward both God and man, in verse 16. Do we always take pains to have a clear conscience? God knows whether we bend the truth, even slightly. Do we have a clear conscience in the way we teach what God's Word says? Paul tells Timothy in the letter he wrote, Do your best to present yourselves to God as one approved, a worker who has no need to be ashamed, rightly handling the word of truth. 2 Timothy 2 and verse 15. The most dangerous thing of all for people to do is to bend God's word of truth. Well, I'd like to thank you once again for joining us for Thought for the Day, where together we can open up the pages of God's word, remembering that that word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Mm -hmm.